the athletic director of the University of Tennessee, Philip Fulmer. Coach, how are you? Hey, Chris, I'm good. How about you today? I'm doing great. Here on with your buddy Austin Price uh, coming at you from the Vol Network Studios. Philip, this has been a tough time for everybody, challenging time as we all try to navigate our way through and do our part to, to prevent the spread of this virus. You know, from your perspective, though, you ha- I was thinking about this today. You have a unique deal in that you've been a head football coach, a Hall of Fame football coach. Now you're an administrator and athletic director. So you're sort of seeing this from a sports perspective anyway, from a lot of different angles. What's that been like for you? Well, it's been it's been really um, hard, you know, like forever, just like everybody else, that our our routine is is um, disrupted. Uh, you know, it's sad to see, you know, the the people around the world that are going through this, the death, the you know, the sickness. Um, I've been awful impressed with. With our commissioner uh, of the conference, Greg Sankey, I've been awful impressed with the group of athletic directors as we work together to try to, you know, kind of see what happens next and uh, and respond to it. Um, Dr. Plowman, our chancellor, Dante Plowman, has been incredible as a leader of our campus. And, and, and you know, on the other side of all this, with that said, I just – have to think that something good will come out of all of this as sad as it as it is right now um our faculty just jumped right in there and and went online in a short period of time and had very few problems and we were all concerned about you know what was that going to look like our athletes have stepped up and and uh, they're doing their classes all all the students have stepped up doing the classes online uh we, our coaches have done a good job of still t- making sure they're being where they're supposed to be, you know, when they're supposed to be there as far as much as they can. They're not, uh, you know, working out, but following them academically. So, you know, as, as a coach, you learn and, and as, a, as an athlete or as, as a businessman or as a radio guy like yourself, you know, challenges equal opportunities. And, and, uh, you know, we're fighting through this. And uh, it's been really a good team here at UT, I can tell you. Coach, it's Austin. So, you know, you have, you and Vicky have stepped up and been out on the campaign, you know, trying to get everybody to not, you know, just have social distancing, but, you know, stay at home. Um, you know, you've got, you know, three girls yourself and a bunch of grandbabies. How, how much have you tried to soak up this family time right now? I know uh, Allison and, 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 and Whit, have, are they still <laughs> out of state or are they, or are they able to come back yet? No, they're out. They're still out of state, and 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 you know he just got his pilot's license, and, and he, or at some flight school, he, he, you know, for the with the with the air force. So uh, they won't be back for a while. Like he's got more training in in Oklahoma, but you know they had to hunker down like everybody else. You know, yeah. even though they weren't around family, that's their family during this time there in in, in the military. And Brittany and Al, Brittany lives in. And, and her family live in Chattanooga, and we FaceTime and do all that and see each other and talk, but uh, it's difficult, you know. Uh, our grandchildren here we, we see quite a bit, uh, but I know everybody's having to go through the same thing, you know, and you're, you know, you're worried about not just not just your older grandparents or parents or whatever, but now, you're, you know, you're, you're worried about the economy and, Everything is that that looks like uh, you know could happen, and it's important you know that we look out and model and and talk about things, so we're not just totally surprised all the time, hoping you know that it doesn't get to something like uh, you know happen still going on in August and September. Yeah, <clears throat> Philip, it's Chris again, and and I think we all agree that just safety and health and everybody's well-being, and certainly from your perspective there at UT, the students' well-being, student-athletes' well-being. I do want to ask you, though, a football-related question. From your experience as a coach, and we've heard, I've talked to tons of coaches all over the country in the last week about this, but I want to get your, you to weigh in. If you can get the kids back on campus sometime in the, sp- in, in the summer, what's realistic to get a team ready to play? I mean, how much, how much time would you need if you had 14 
days or 15 days of quasi spring practice workouts, say in June or July, and you came back to camp. Is is that realistic, or, or would you need more time? Do you think? No, I I think um, I don't think there's any question that. I mean, gosh, we used to do it that way, right? Guys right, would go right. away for the summer, <laughs> you know, and you were you checked on them, you sent them sent them a workout, you made sure they were working out. When they came back, they had to pass a test of some sort, a physical test. You know, I remember the 16 110s or back, back in my days of the mile, you know. <laughs> right. I mean, you, you better, you had to be in shape to make that. And then you started the three weeks of two a days, you know, and some people did three a days and all that sort of thing. But you, so, yeah, as long as everybody's doing the same kind of thing, you know, everybody, nobody has a upper hand as, as more practices or more days or whatever. You can put a product on the field, you know, that's pretty good after two, well, three weeks of training or so, and um, everybody understands that. That's that's uh, you know, we we specialize so much anymore, and we've got the nutritionists and the, all these all the strength coaches and everything. But it didn't always be. It wasn't always that way. Coach, it's Austin again. We would we at Volquest have been taking this unique time and looking back at each week we. To do a podcast looking back at big wins in Tennessee history. Last week we did 95 Bama. Tomorrow we will highlight 96, with 95 season, Ohio State. You look back at those games, and it's where you, 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 you took the program where you started winning up front on both sides of the ball, offensive line, defensive line. Talk about what Jeremy's gotten done to flip the line of scrimmage here in, in, in just a couple of years because it seems like Tennessee's point of weakness when he arrived – has become more of a point of a strength uh, under Coach Pruitt. Yeah. yeah, Austin, you're you're exactly right. I mean, this conference, you 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 better be good up front. Certainly, quarterback always makes a difference. You know, when you've got a great corner, shut down corner, as they say, it makes a difference. So if you have a difference maker, wide receiver, running back, those are special. But if you really want to win this conference and and win it consistently, uh, you have to be good up front. And he's done a tremendous job of uh, of getting us uh, to a different place particularly on the defensive front uh, you know there's not there's not a bunch of guys there that you maybe one one or two maybe that are, you say that are here now there's some coming in you know that are five star guys you know but during the course of the season you saw them on the defensive front just keep getting better and better and controlling the line of scrimmage and stopping the run and, and making teams do things they didn't want to do. And, and uh, that's, that's a great recipe to win. Uh, on the offensive side, we certainly improved. I would say that we certainly improved from the beginning of the season to the end of the season. Did we ever actually become a dominating offensive front? No. We still got a ways uh, to do that, but we sure look different now with those young guys coming in and now the transfer coming in uh, than we did and Brandon staying, you know, his, his sixth year. Actually, we, we look like a good-looking offensive front, and they've been coached well in two years. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like you. I'm excited about them, and, and uh, <laughs> I just want to get them out there, you know, get them out there and play. One, one other similarity from, from your time is the fact that Coach Pruitt, especially with Jay Graham back in the fold, has targeted the state of North Carolina in recruiting. How, how big, when you look back at your time, how when you look back at the the Carl Pickens, Leonard Little, obviously Jay was one of them as well, uh, and several other guys over your tenure. How, how big is that state for for Tennessee success? Austin, it's it's, it's huge. Uh, the mountain should not be a barrier. I mean, we're closer. Uh, you know, the North Carolina to, to half the, the kids, you know, in the state. And um, um, we own North Carolina, especially eastern North Carolina and, and, and uh, northern uh, South Carolina, upper state, upper state South Carolina. Uh, and it, it made a huge difference. I think, I believe in our national championship, I, Chris would know and remember, or you might too. Uh, I think every defensive lineman we had was from Carolina, <laughs> one of the Carolinas, you know, and uh, it does. It makes a huge difference. Uh, you've got Atlanta and North Georgia. That's a, that's a great area. 
uh, but there's not uh, there's not any better area around than that Western North Carolina and, and uh, Upper State South Carolina. Philip, it's Chris. First of all, Austin was like I think in kindergarten when you guys That's won the national true. championship. And That's well, not I true. Do, I was trying to do the math. <laughs> That's <laughs> not true. <laughs> and there's just something about those South Carolina guys. There's something about the the, the, the good stock. Those kids from South Carolina. I'll they're just good, leave it. They're there. good. Good. Yeah. Good. Good stock. And you know they're they're well coached. And as as is, I mean Tennessee's so much better than it was before. So we we have we have a chance. Well, Philip, we really appreciate you spending some time with us tonight. You guys, you Vicky and the kids, you guys stay well, stay healthy. And um, and I, I know we all, I think I speak for everybody, we look forward to, to getting back out and uh, yep. hope practice cranks back up soon enough. But most of all, to everybody, we, we, we stop the spread of this virus and get back to some normalcy in this country. That's right. And thank you guys for, for having me on. Appreciate it. Thanks, Coach. Okay, Coach. That's Coach Philip Forward.